So guys, here we are again with another um, sort of preview of what we're doing with um, the new Intel chipset boards that are coming up. Now, you may be thinking that this one looks a little bit bare because the packaging sort of isn't on there, but there's a very good reason. Uh, I'm not allowed to show you the packaging, at least not until the NDA date, which I'm not allowed to tell you. So I am quite, quite sort of restricted in what I can say about the board and um, the features. I can tell you about the Gigabyte features of this board, but I can't tell you anything to do with the Intel features. Can't show you the CPU socket. Can't tell you anything about the chipset or the performance of the CPU or anything like that. So I'm quite restricted, but I did want to sort of, you know, get down and sort of, you know, into the nitty gritty of this board, who it's aimed at, and what some of the features are that Gigabyte have got. So what I want to do to start with is I'm going to actually take the board out and put it to one side because uh, we'll get around to that in a minute. Firstly, I want to talk through the accessories. Now, there's a lot. Um, so really, I just need to get straight into it. First up, case badge sticker, just like we'd normally expect. Gigabyte branded in their lovely blue colouring. We've got, in an anti-static bag, a freeway SLI uh, bridge, NVIDIA SLI. So straight away, that tells us that the board's going to support freeway SLI. As well as, in this one, a four-way SLI bridge. So now we know for sure that, uh, yeah, it's going to accept four-way SLI. So anyone looking for a board that's going to accept, um, you know, uh, multiple graphics cards in a four-way SLI configuration, there you go. We've got the user's manual. Um, I'm guessing this is for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module um, based on what they've actually got here, set your desktop free. So yeah, it just tells you really about installing the drivers and utilities for a Bluetooth, Wi-Fi Bluetooth module. We have a user guide so this is uh, all branded under the g1 killer range uh, because this is the g1 sniper 5 uh, user manual for that still sticking with that same logo design that we've seen on uh, on previous g1 killer boards we've got the multilingual uh, installation guidebook that we normally expect as well now this is quite interesting we've got uh, an amp upgrade kit so this is all to do with uh, the onboard audio so uh, you've got a little chip in here one additional OP amp included and then uh, sort of in this pack you've got these specialist tweezers to obviously take it out and uh, and put this one in so uh, yeah quite handy never seen sort of anything like that before but there you go we have some crossfire bridges and SLI bridges so we've got a single crossfire bridge and a single Nvidia SLI uh, bridge as well we also have a rear IO in black with the G1 killer branding on there. Uh, lots of USB 3.0 as we can see. We've got two, four, six HDMI's, display ports, uh, lots of different connectors, but we'll have a look at the uh, at the board in a minute and you'll be able to see that sort of firsthand. We've got the uh, Gigabyte Intel 8 series uh, gaming utilities. So you've got your chipset drivers, uh, your RAID drivers and so forth on here, but we do always recommend that you go on to uh, the Intel website and the Gigabyte website and download the latest ones. We've got a uh, utility driver disk as well for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. We also have the uh, Wi-Fi antenna by the looks of it. So uh, yeah, we've got different parts here. So we've got the bits here which will screw on, I'm guessing to the rear I.O. Uh, so these will screw onto there. Then you've got this bit with the sort of uh, antenna which stands up quite nicely and a nice sort of length of cable as well. So there's that, and then we've also got, yeah, so what they what that actually screws onto is a uh, sort of separate module, which is uh, obviously going to be installed onto the board. So we've got an expansion sort of bracket. These are the, uh, the two screw points. You've got a Bluetooth LED and a Wi-Fi LED as well, so twin antennas for that. Uh, nice sort of uh, black PCB on here, which is going to match the motherboard. As we know, Gigabyte have changed all their motherboards to have a black PCB now. And then, yeah, this is your uh, your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth module just sitting on here. And this is uh, all plugged in via to uh, PC Express, PCI Express uh, X1 slot. So a uh, nice sort of small little add-on card there. thing I like about this, which sort of it makes Gigabyte slightly different to the competition is the fact that this is PCI Express. It's not like some of the other ones which uh, you have to only, you're only able to plug it into you know, an Asus motherboard or, or one of the other brands. This you can plug into any. The usual Gigabyte front panel uh, USB 3.0. So we've got two USB 3.0s on there, all the relevant mounting screws and that goes straight onto the native USB 3.0 header on your motherboard. Then on top of that we have a USB cable which is uh, yeah, for 
works in conjunction with this I'm guessing because yeah that matches up with that so that gives it the functionality there uh, for the Bluetooth and then we've got a variety as we got two four six eight ten uh, sorry two four six yeah so we've got uh, six lots of uh, SATA cables and they are right angled as well and they've got the little uh, locking mechanism clip on there as well and that's pretty much it for the accessories so loads of stuff in there I'm just going to sort of pile it back into there so we can actually now really focus on what we're all bothered about which is of course the motherboard now I've been a big fan of the G1 sniper series and all the sort of you know G1 killer boards I wasn't a fan of bullets and guns and things like that and as we know, MSI started doing that as well with their X-Power stuff. But uh, they sort of have redeemed themselves. There's still like a, a little skull on there with a, with a dagger in his mouth. But yeah, they've, they've certainly improved things, definitely. So if I just move all the packaging out of the way and get the cameraman to sort of have a little look at the, uh, at the board in a little bit more detail. So you can see straight away, ATX form factor board and it has got that lovely black PCB that I spoke about. Gigabyte have changed their whole range of boards so now they've got a black PCB. So gone are the days of the blue and the horrible um, sort of you know boring professional kind of colours. Now everything has that more sort of extreme feel to it. Now I'm really 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 restricted in what I can say to you about this. Uh, I can mention stuff to do with Gigabyte. I cannot show you under here can't show you what the uh, CPU pin layout looks like. I can't mention the chipset that's under here, though obviously there's a lot of rumours, speculation, and everything going around already. So instead, I'm going to focus on yeah, gigabyte features, design, aesthetics, that kind of thing. So black PCB with the sort of green colour in that we'd expect from a, from a G1 sniper motherboard. Uh, we've seen that, you know, on the <coughs> excuse me, on the sort of Z77 boards. We saw the green and black, and it works really, really well. Now, to start with, I want to talk about the cooling a little bit. So we've got this quite large cooling uh, heatsink up here. Normally, this would be uh, a passive design, but as you can see, they've included a very, very small, um, I'd probably say 40 uh, millimeter fan uh, just on there, just to exhaust a little bit of heat away from uh, the phases that are on here. Ultra durable branding, as we expect, and there are little uh, barbs here as well. Now, they look like um, standard sort of quarter inch, so no problem there with uh, you know uh, adding it in to an existing radiator setup. If you're not using them, there's little plastic grommets that go in there as well. Around the CPU socket, we can see that there's plenty of room for uh, larger CPU coolers. But in this day and age, we find a lot of people buying boards like this, sort of on the higher end of the scale. They're going to be going for all-in-one water blocks like Corsair H80Is, H100s, H110s, uh, NZXT Krakens, and so forth. Um, so yeah, plenty of room for them anyway. And then we've got our fan headers up here as well. So we've got a 4-pin CPU fan header, 4-pin CPU optional fan header. Power-wise, we've got a single 8-pin uh, just up here, CPU power connector, which is going to obviously provide all the power to the CPU socket area and give you the best possible power delivery, especially when overclocking. Looking at the memory, we've got uh, four slots in total. I'm guessing, just guessing, that it's going to accept probably up to 32 gig of memory. Um, most likely 2133, 2400, 2666, all via overclock should be absolutely fine. And them sort of uh, speed and capacities and memory. We have a few buttons over here, so we've got the reset switch just here, we've got a big red power button, we've got another button here which generally um, something like that would be like your clear CMOS. We've got some voltage points as well, so we've got our V-Core, V-Dim, V-Ring, that's all I can say about that, uh, V-I-O-A, VAX-G, V-S-A, um, V-I-O-D and V-R-I-N. So we've got all the, the, the different voltage points there as well. We've got some more fan headers uh, by the looks of it. So we've got some three pins here. Debug LED here as well. Uh, normal standard ATX 24 pin uh, power connector. USB 3.0 header just hidden over here. Also power wise, uh, we've got a SATA connector uh, just here. Now, the whole point of this SATA connector is so that it can provide extra power to uh, the motherboard, mainly to the expansion slots, which are all down here. So we've got plenty of different expansion slots. And if you are populating um, sort of, you know, three slots or four slots in TriSLI, then yeah, you're gonna wanna plug in this, uh, this SATA connector uh, just down here, which is nicely um, sort of, you know, angled onto the board. So a SATA connect can, connector can just sort of come up through your chassis and, uh, and plug in here. 
Now we've got plenty of SATA ports, two, four, six, eight, ten. As you can see, uh, three blocks or three banks of them are black and then another two are grey. That may obviously denote that you know they are um, different controllers or different speeds. I can't mention what speeds because of obviously that's down to the chipset, but I'm sure you can uh, all take a little bit of a of a guess on that one. But yeah, plenty of different uh, SATA ports there, and uh, yeah, I'm sure you can agree that some are going to be from the Intel chipset and some are going to be most likely from Marvel or uh, as media. Generally, that's that's how it works. I can't see this new chipset being any different there. Um, coming back up to the USB 3.0 port, uh, I did miss out. There's two little switches here. So, uh, yeah, it just looks like we've got um, BIOS switches there as well. So, um, yeah, it's worth noting that obviously there are some, some high end features that overclockers would be interested in. You know, that and uh, the voltage points that we spoke about down here, the power, reset, CMOS, debug LED, and so forth. Now, carrying on moving around the board, we can see that we've got all our front panel headers. So, we've got front panel audio. We've got our, uh, another system fan header, 4-pin, another one here, another 4-pin, USB 2.0, USB 2.0, we have another USB 3.0 here, which is uh, comes with a nice little dust cap. So yeah, we've got two lots of uh, USB 3.0s, one down here and then the one that we spoke about just up here as well. Let's get that back on there. Another system fan header, 4-pin again. We've got all our usual front panel um, headers for system LEDs, power switches and so forth another four pin uh, PWM fan header and then we've got our, our clear CMOS just here. So um, going back to sort of the cooling design, uh, obviously we spoke about what was around the CPU socket up here and we have got this bit which sort of connects down as well, Gigabyte branding. Now I don't know whether there's anything under here, uh, there may be um, the likes of a PLX chip, don't know until obviously we, we really sort of dig into it which will be when we do the review, there may be a very very small, it's about the sort of right size for a PLX chip. Um, who knows, or that may be under this large heatsink here. And when I say large, it is quite sort of uh, big in terms of its dimension, but it is still very low profile, so you're not going to have any problems with it being um, you know, in the way and obscuring graphics cards and so forth. Now, expansion slots is something that uh, obviously I'm really keen to sort of look at. So we can see uh, straight away that we've got four, and uh, yeah, they are in green as well to match with the color scheme. Four PCI Express X16 lanes. Now, looking at it, we can see the top one is wired to X16. I don't know if the camera can actually pick up the, the tiny, tiny little gold pins on here uh, without distorting, but yeah, this is uh, obviously wired for X16. The next one down is wired for X8. The next one down after that is wired for X16. And then the last one is wired for X8 as well. But, but, but can't really comment as to what configuration these run in because uh, obviously that's down to the chipset or possibly a PLX chip which may be under here can't really comment so there you go that's all I can really say about that you can see that they're wired x16 x8 x16 x8 that's about as far as I can go in terms of telling you if you're going to be populating them in crossfire or SLI it may all change but there you go we have uh, also three PCI Express X1 slots, obviously one can be used with that uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth module as well. There's another little four pin fan header just sort of hidden over here. So straight away there's a bucket load of uh, four pin fan headers. There's a couple of uh, three pin ones as well, but yeah, it's mainly uh, four pin fan headers. Audio wise, we've got a Soundcore 3D, which as we know is pretty much the, the top banana when it comes to uh, onboard motherboard audio. So uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we're going to sort of hear good things from that as well and I do love the fact that they do these these little uh, <coughs> sort of green capacitors over here as well it really sort of goes in with the colour scheme quite nicely would have been nice to see them in other areas but yeah that's mainly down to the audio so there you go with that um, other than that the only other thing I can really show you on this board is going to be the rear I.O. so this is where it gets quite interesting because it looks proper dapper and that's the only word I can explain it with dapper because it does look pretty amazing. So we've got two USB 2.0 ports, obviously black, a single PS2 mouse co keyboard combo port. It's really weird because that is normally at the top and these are normally down the bottom. So it's really weird why they've switched them. Don't know. Maybe there was a whole sort of, you know, uh, conversation about that. And they thought, yeah, let's let's put it down the bottom and the USB at the top. We've got a uh, coaxial audio here. We've got two USB 3.0s here, the blue ones, another two just here, and another two just here. We've got a HDMI port here, another HDMI port here, display port, 
and uh, you can see these are all sort of gold connectors as well uh, which is obviously going to strengthen the connectivity and so forth um, yeah so obviously we've got these uh, we've also got uh, two ethernet ports uh, one um, generally when you see two one is going to be intel one is going to be um, someone else so it could be real tech or it could be as media um, or someone else we'll soon find that out when we actually come to doing the review and sort of really checking into the specs of this board and, and trying it out for ourselves we've also got op optical sp diff over here now something that i like um, some people may not like but it should actually match up quite nicely with the rear io panel because these are all sort of gold connectors um, now i have seen gold connectors like this before but they still sort of keep the blue the green the pink um, black and orange rings around them but i'm guessing if i do a little bit of digging yeah, so on the rear I.O., once this is on here, you can see that they're all pretty nicely labelled anyway. So we've got mic, we've got line out, we've got centre and sub, rear, and then headphones as well. So yeah, it's all nicely lined up. They didn't really need to add any colour on it, so that's why they haven't. So there you go. Um, that is pretty much it for what I can explain on this board. There is a new BIOS. That's about as far as I can go with that. I'm not going to tell you what it looks like, but I know that Gigabyte have released some sort of exclusive new pictures when it comes to uh comes to that as well now one thing i have noticed is there's a little power um header here and you can see that there's a cable running off of this and it goes straight into the heat sink so i don't know if something lights up on here perhaps it's this skull with a sort of bit around it it looks like it could be and the cameraman is nodding yes 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 it is so there you go this is all going to light up and i believe you, i don't know if the camera can pick this up but there's like a really distinct line going down here I don't know if it can pick it up, but um, it's basically an EMI shield, which is something that we've seen with other board manufacturers when it's come to having fandangle audio like Soundcore 3D. And um, yeah, this is exactly the same. And guess what colour it lights up? I'm not going to tell you, but comment below and you tell me if you can guess. I'll give you a clue. It's not red, it's not yellow, it's not blue, it's not purple, it's not pink, it's not white, it's not black. So I don't know what colour it could be. Um, but yeah, see if you can guess what, what colour Gigabyte might have used for that, that LED bit on there. Um, don't even know if you can... Yeah, there you go. You can get a better view of the actual uh, of the line here, the EMI shield on there, which obviously just helps with uh, electrical interference and making sure there isn't any when it comes to the audio. But yeah, based on the colour scheme of this board, what colour do you think it's going to be? See who gets it right. There you go. Um, hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into the Gigabyte G1 Sniper 5, uh, part of the G1 killer range. This is obviously uh, one of the new unreleased boards which will be coming out very, very soon. I wish I could tell you more. I really, really do. But um, right now we're going to have to get this into our test bench and get our processor on there, the processor that I can't even name. And uh, yeah, that way when it does come to launch, we will have all the results, all the benchmarks and everything for you then so there you go um hopefully you've enjoyed this unboxing even though you didn't get to see the box uh but yeah overview of the gigabyte g1 sniper 5 full atx uh motherboard and stay tuned where we will have a lot more videos of loads of different boards coming up and uh obviously when the benchmarks are released head over to etechnics.com and you will see all the proper benchmarks and the full reviews on this board and many many other until next time see you later